Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we're taking a look at the new UAD console. Universal Audio rebuilt the UI of this application from the ground up, and with it come some nice enhancements. If you're not familiar with console, I suggest you first check out my video on console 2.0. The workflow tips there are still relevant and will help you understand the application. But if you are familiar with console, let's dive on in and see what's new. When I first launched console, you will see a setup that looks similar to this. I happen to have only an X4 connected in this setup. If you aren't familiar with console, this might look confusing at first, but hang in there, it's actually pretty easy. Let's go to the top and review some basics. On the left side, click close to collapse all of the sections. On the right, let's hide our aux in control room for now. One at a time, let's open each section starting with the inputs. Think about console as being the center for your monitoring as well as where you set the inputs for your interfaces. You can set preamp levels, pad, phantom power, polarity reverse, and high pass filters. This is also where we can insert a Unison plugin. If we look at Luna, the layout is extremely similar. We can click on the top of each channel to select our interface inputs. And if we record enable the channel, we can select a Unison preamp. Let's select the Neve 1073. If we flip back to console, we can see the 1073 is loaded on input one, meaning that both applications are always in sync with each other. The next section in console is our inserts. This is where we can add additional plugins. And the new menu with categories makes navigation super easy. I can sort by only equalizers and select an API 550A. And now I have my Neve followed by the API. And you can see my inserts in console appear as part of my record effects in Luna. In console, we can select to commit our plugins by selecting record, or we can hear them by selecting monitor, but only commit the dry recording. On the right side, we can change all inputs globally, or we can click the UAD insert button on each channel to set our inputs to have different settings. Now let's explore the send section. The rotary knobs on the two aux sends allow us to send to something like a reverb or delay for our artists. This is where we need to open up the aux on the right side. Let's filter by reverb and add the pure plate. I can now use my sends so that my artist can hear a plate reverb while recording. And even if I close the aux on the right side, I can still send to this reverb. Let's close pure plate for now. By clicking on this tab on the left side, we can send to our auxes using a fader instead of a dial. But for me, I typically prefer using the knob. The next section is our cues. You can send signal to a cue via the rotary knob. And if you click on the cue, you can select to send to something like the Apollo's headphone amp or a physical hardware output. Console allows up to four stereo cues. If you click the tab on the left, you can send to cues via the faders, which feels a little better to me. But more importantly, it allows you to pan each cue, which allows you to send either hard left or hard right essentially giving you eight mono cues instead of four stereo cues. This is great for when I use my headphone distribution system. Last up is our output section. I don't typically change my outputs, so I can hide it on the top left. Actually, I could hide any of the sections if I want to make console visually easier to navigate. Console takes up a good amount of screen real estate. By clicking the top of the faders, you can switch to a shorter fader size. Personally, I prefer the larger faders, but the smaller ones allow you to see more of the sections above. Now, let's clear up any confusion. Console is about monitoring your interface. So when adjusting faders at the bottom, you're setting relative balances of what you want to monitor, not the level of what you are recording. Furthermore, it has nothing to do with the mixer in your DAW, so think of them as separate environments. And while we're here, let's click our mono virtual inputs to gang two of them to stereo. We'll name the first one DAW and the second one CPU. And if you want to hide any of your input channels, you can use Command I or the menu at the top to show and hide inputs. Let's hide the SPDIF channel. Last, on the right hand side, remember we can show our control room, but I don't use the control room since I use a hardware console with my Apollos. They made navigating console even faster to use by being able to select smaller versions of the sections on the left side. Or click large to see all of the sections fully extended with faders. We can also open or collapse all of our sections at once with the click of a button. 
And if I click the sessions menu on the top left, I can recall different console setups to fit my needs. Let's load Urban Sound Studio Full. When I load my save session for my full Apollo setup, I can now see a more extensive UAD console setup. This now shows my Apollo X16, XAP, and X4. Notice that my X16 does not show unison slots as there are not preamps on this unit, so we wouldn't expect to see them. I keep my control room closed because I have separate monitoring and talkback hardware. My aux contains pure play for when the artists need reverb, but I also keep that closed You'll notice that my external talkback has an EQ and limiter on it to make my voice as clear as possible for the artists. My cues I keep as full faders as I use a headphone distribution system for my artists. And this allows me to use that pan knob to take the four stereo cues and make them the eight mono cues by panning them hard left and hard right. And hopefully this gives you a nice overview as to how I personally use console in my setup. Thanks for watching. What do you think? And do you have any unique ways that you work with console that you want to share here? If so, please leave some comments in the chat below. And as always, please help support this channel by liking the video and hitting subscribe.